Hello, and welcome to another edition of Long Beach Treasures. I'm your host, Harvey Keller. Today we're going to be looking at Casa Benito, and I have two guests with me. Robert Thomas here is the owner. Welcome, Robert. Good morning, thank you. And Peter Cates is the one who selected the colors, and as you drive around Long Beach, if you see a Peter Cates uh, building, uh, you can identify it very readily. So, Peter, how did you select the colors for this building? Well, I always try to go with a uh, whatever theme the building is. So this had a Spanish-y, Mediterranean, uh, classic style. So I went with the rich terracotta tones, which would be made of the earth and the more primitive structures. Did you change the uh, facade out here in any way? We changed it cosmetically by uh, busting out concrete, which uh, had been put in. We put in plants against the building. And then the parkway area, we broke out put the concrete back in a stepping stone fashion with moss between and some parkway palm trees out front. My last name has no S also. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people like to give me an S, but it's simple. Thanks. All right. Uh, let's go in and look at the interior. I think uh, Rhonda's in there and she's waiting for us. Okay. Come on, guys. All right. This looks like Rhonda up here. Thank you, Rhonda. Tell us a little bit about the building. Well, what would you like to know? Uh, all of it. Okay. Um, first of all, we have this beautiful lobby, and, um, you know, there's a lot of work been put into, like, bringing this back to its original beauty. Are the chandeliers, the fireplace, uh, the floor, are these all original? Those are all original, absolutely. And has this always been an apartment house? Um, no, actually, in the beginning, it was a hotel. I believe the name of the hotel was the Bonnie Castle. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, you may know uh, the uh, stencil ceiling. Would this happen to be by Raven? I don't know, but it, it really, uh, when the first time I saw it, I was just taken to back in my mind to the Madison building on Pine Avenue. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, has this been uh, retrofitted? Um, no, it didn't need to be retrofitted. Um, it's all um, concrete block. I believe there was one support beam that had to be run up the center of the building and that was all. Mm -hmm. It was originally, the foundation was originally planned for six to eight stories and apparently they ran out of money or for some reason they topped it off at four. What would you consider the style of architecture? Um, I would say this is a Spanish style and Peter could probably do better than that. Baroque or? I think that's what it's termed. Okay as opposed to Spanish re uh, Revival. I think so. Okay. This is a beautiful building. I, I really do like the, uh, the stencil ceilings. They really give it a dramatic uh, look in here. It's quite grand and unexpected when you come in the front door, and then it's vaulted and huge. Now, did you do the interior as well as the exterior colors? We've done a few touches on the inside. We want to do more in the lobby. We put the curtains up. Uh, before I got here, there's been some initial just painting and kind of cleaning up. We are going to come back and spend some attention in here. And I believe uh, you told me earlier that is an old phone booth. Yeah, uh, over that was there. originally a public telephone for um, guests in the hotel. Oh. And this was. Uh, um, that's the concierge desk, and um, that's the original mailboxes. Uh, um, guests of the hotel would come in and pick up their mail from there. And I have to ask you another question just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. As I look up the grand staircase up mm -hmm. here, on the landing here I see a little door that doesn't go all the way to the floor. Oh, right. It looks like it's from Alice in Wonderland, but actually that's where um, all the electrical breakers are for the first floor. Oh, what a neat way to hide. Yeah, exactly. Could we walk up here and look uh, at the absolutely. elevator? I assume this is the original elevator, too? It is too. the original elevator. We've done a lot of work. Um, you know, bringing it up to code, up to standard. Oh, it must so be it in has use. All, it has all, I just, I just oh. called it. It has all the um, modern microprocessors and everything now, but the look is still original. Okay. Uh, could we perhaps look at maybe a unit or two? I understand, oh, well, here's the elevator now. Let's sure. Take a quick peek at it before. Are we going anywhere when we go to a unit um, that we sure. need to get we can into go the to elevator? The third floor. Would you like to go now? Sure. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is quaint. Thank you. This is original. It is. It is. Can you push the third floor for me? OK, 
Okay, guys, here we are in the third floor, so All right, you have to tell me where to go. Go down to the right, number 307. I'll follow you. Now, how many units are there in this? There are 39 total. 39. Right, there are 38 from the first to the fourth floor, and then we actually took a space in the basement. Excuse me, here we are and um, turn it into like an industrial style. Do you have parking here? Um, no, it's street parking only. There's not much of a problem. Street sweeping nights are a bit of a big deal, but we have parking close. Come on in. There's not a lot of room to move around in here. She's got it really crammed full with it. Yeah, she does. Beautiful building. She's also a designer. She does landscape design. Now, this is a studio. Yes, this is a studio. And how many studios in the building? Um, let me see. How many studios? 26. 26 studios. 26. And the yeah. rest are one bedroom? And the penthouse is a very large two bedroom. And then, um, counting the basement apartment, there are five one bedrooms. This is a beautiful little building. How many, uh, this was built in what, 1923? Mm -hmm. So in 1923, there weren't a lot of automobiles, and that's probably one of the reasons there is no parking here. Exactly. And that's one of the drawbacks of so many buildings in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. The Cooper Arms, uh, uh, the Lafayette, uh, no parking. Right. Fortunately, there's, um, you know, adequate public parking lots that, that charge like a minimal fee, and it's really not that big of a problem. We have uh, two separate parking lots within one block mm -hmm. that you can choose for $30 a month, I believe it is, for public parking. Right. Oh, so then you could have parking um, available. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay, can we go up and see your place? Sure. All right, now... This is considered the penthouse? This is what we call the penthouse loft. And this is going to be your new abode? This is where I will be, yes, absolutely. We've been working on it for about six and a half weeks. Um, we've had a, up to a crew of 12 people working here in this apartment. Um, and we're just about done in about two or three more weeks. And how large is it? It's just under 1,700 square feet. Uh, we have been able to restore most of the unit without uh, completely tearing it apart. So, for example, we were able to restore the hardwood floors in both bedrooms, and unfortunately in this room, we were not able to restore the floor because of the water damage that had happened at some point in the past. But we've put down a new hardwood floor made of quarter sun white oak, which is going to be beautiful, and you can see the gentlemen are here working on that today. We've also stripped down all of the original wood windows to their wood state and stained them. And we took them out, out of the actual window openings. They were laid down on tables and given lots of loving laborious care. Too. Is this the original crown molding? This is the original crown molding through part of the house. What you're looking at right now is new, but through the bedrooms, uh, we were able to keep the original crown molding. And obviously this is a brand new kitchen. The kitchen is uh, pretty much brand new from top to bottom. We did tear this room all the way down to the studs. We have replumbed and rewired this entire unit. Um, and Peter can tell you a little bit about the design work he did on the kitchen. Peter, this is a unique little uh, island here with a, a stove attached. Is that your design? Yes, we had a, basically the kitchen before was about just as skinny as can be. We had a one tiny little skinny door there and we opened it up with the archway, created the island and then we have a full size uh, stove with six burners and we added this island one so that uh, my thought was you do your primary cooking on two burners and then Robert uh, can be here stirring and chopping and uh, talking to his uh, guests or looking out across the room. So we've done that. Uh, the archway kind of gives a nice little uh, bit of depth and uh, division to the kitchen, but you're still very much part of the whole area. Could we maybe walk back and check out the back part of the unit? Sure, I think you want to see the bathrooms. They look really beautiful. We've okay. done a lot of work on them. Okay, Peter, what did you do here in the bathroom? Basically, we've uh, worked with what we had at hand as far as we've um, kept all fixtures in the same locations. We've taken the old uh, built-in tub out, replaced it with the uh, retro-styled new tub with the claw foot, a new uh, Kohler sink, pedestal sink and toilet matching. 
The floors and uh, the wainscot wall we did with a white marble. There's no veins in it. We did a diagonal pattern on the floor and a brick pattern on the walls capped with a ceramic molding on the top. I really like when we've got uh, stone or tile on the wall. It just feels like you can clean it and it just feels sharp. Put a soft color of paint, dimmers on all lights and speakers, and it's... Unusual little tub. Yeah, it's... Uh, we were wanting to put a, a vintage clawfoot tub in here, but they were all uh, kind of beat up. They weren't cheap, and we could put this brand new one with the vintage style in for the same price, so we went with the, with the brand new tub. And this, I assume, is the master bedroom? This is the guest room here. And uh, again, it's got the restored windows. We've refinished the hardwood floors. Um, this is the original crown molding that uh, Robert spoke of a few minutes ago. And we've got our little speakers you can see hidden around here, bringing us beautiful music, which we could have on right now. Uh, this is a nice corner room. It gets a lot of good uh, flow of air from the ocean and a beautiful tree outside there. And this is going to be a two-bedroom unit? It is a two-bedroom unit, yes. Robert has his office off-site. He does have a little office hidden away in, in the closet here for emergency work. <laughs> Can we see the master bedroom? Sure, it's right there, right behind Robert. If we'd and that's where our other bathroom is, too. Okay, this is your domain. Yes, and unfortunately, uh, we have not been able to do much work on the design side because the guys are here doing the hardwood floor today. We did use this room for storage. Um, but as soon as we wrap everything up, we'll be doing all, all the bedroom linens. I've ordered some beautiful antique nightstands and a beautiful armoire to go in this room as well. I've also contracted a company to come out and do some custom closets that will work off Peter's design. Um, in the bathroom here... Great we, shower. I love the shower. Th thank you. We decided that we would put um, five shower, shower heads in the shower. So we have the one old-fashioned shower head at top, and then the four body sprays. Um, one of the body sprays is actually being repaired at the moment. And because of the marble and the glass brick, you don't need a shower curtain? Um, actually, what happened, we are getting a clear three-quarter inch glass shower door. But the door came in the wrong size. It's one of those little hiccups you have when you're doing a construction project like this. So um, we're using a shower curtain for the time being until the door is installed. Boy, 1,700 square feet, that's a, that's a good size, that's as big as my house. It is, it's a lot of square footage, and fortunately in this case it's very usable. There's not a lot of space that we won't be able to use, so I, I feel very fortunate that it's a really free-flowing space, and even just in the uh, little bit of time I've been here during construction and been staying here, it, it feels great. And you're still in the Wilmore Historic District? Um, Peter, do you know the answer to that? Because I am not sure. I'm not sure where, how far it extends up. We're on 6th and Pacific right now, so I, I think we're pretty darn close if we're not in it. Well, guys, I want to thank you because uh, this is spectacular. So uh, let us know when the grand opening is and we'll be here. We'll do that. Thanks. Thank you for your time today. Thanks. Thank you. Glad you could come by and, visit. and don't go away. We'll be right back with more Long Beach Treasures. A lot of things can happen in 30 seconds. Make your business happen. Welcome back to Long Beach Treasures. Now we're going to go and visit Rose Towers, which is one of the historic sites here in Long Beach. And joining me is Chris Heister. He is an owner here, and I believe you're also the president of the Homeowners Association? Correct. Okay, give me a little information about the Rose Towers. Okay, um, the building was built in 1928, and it was built by George Riddle, who was the architect that built a lot of the Spanish-style uh, multifamily housing units in Long Beach. Um, the style is Spanish colonial revival, and some of the um, interesting details of that are um, the asymmetrical nature of the details. Um, the clay tile roof, the wrought iron supports um, that go up to the roof, the balconies that are made out of wood and also wrought iron, 
Um, some of the details include like the Moorish openings on the balconies and um, the deeply inset windows, the wooden doors, those types of things. Now, it's my understanding that this uh, is in its original condition, except for the uh, exterior stuccoing? That's correct. Um, it has the original clay tile roof. Um, the building was re-text coded in the late 80s, and we are in the process this year of getting that um, taken off and then replastered with the original finish. That ought to set you back a few dollars. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> Um, I, you have uh, parking here for your guests, or for your owners, don't you? That's correct. Um, underneath the deck area, which is in the rear of the building, there's actually uh, underground secured parking. There's one space for every homeowner here. Can we walk back and you can describe some of the details of the sure. building? Sure, sure. Um, the first detail is, first of all, the concrete walkway. And instead of it just being straight and narrow, it kind of gives the um, idea of meandering down a pathway. Um, part of the idea for the Spanish colonial architecture came from Spain, where um, it, they gave it sort of a picturesque village sort of look. So some of the details that um, reinforce that are the raised area in back, um, the balconies off um, the French doors, um, the exposed stairwells um, that come up, and just the differing, uh, varying roof lines. Um, another feature of the building are the hand-painted tiles, and you'll notice those on the two um, rear units on the second floor, and then there's also more tile work in the stairwells up ahead. I want to walk down here and look in one of the uh, openings down here because I think you said that uh, it shows uh, some of the original uh, stucco uh, as opposed to the exterior which is now sort of just a, a plain type of stucco? Correct. Um, hopefully your camera can pick this up. But this is an example of the original fin stucco finish and the design is called Cat's Eye and that's the finish we're going to try to replicate um, when we resurface the outside of the building. And how many units do you have here? Uh, Twenty. Are most of them owner-occupied? Um, all but three are, yes. Do you have uh, a very large turnover? Um, no, actually it seems to be pretty steady. I think people, um, you know, when they live in a building like this, they're sort of attached to the details and the charm and the architecture. And so once people move in here, they're most likely to stay. And now you are designated, so you're bound by the uh, Cultural Heritage Commission that you cannot change uh, the exterior in any way without uh, a certificate of appropriateness? That is correct. The uh, windows look like they are wooden. Are these original? Um, there may be a few original ones left. <laughs> as far as I know, a lot of them have been replaced, but they're done so in a manner that's consistent with the original type of window um, that was used for the building. Okay, Chris, uh, this is one of the larger units here in the building? Yeah, this is uh, one of the four two-bedroom, two-bath units in the complex. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, we chose this one just because of the um, historical accuracy, accurateness of um, the unit. Um, this is an example of Spanish colonial revival architecture. Uh, some of the details are the cathedral ceiling, uh, the hand-painted beams, um, this one also has the original mock fireplace, which not all the units have anymore. And um, some of the other details are like the niche in the wall over in the corner. Now, were niches just to display artifacts and stuff? Mainly, yes. It was sort of um, a custom back then in that style to have a small area to display objects and personal artifacts. Um, also, there's the French doors, which open out onto a balcony, which is, again, another um, characteristic of the Spanish colonial revival style.
It's mainly for ventilation rather than usefulness because they're very narrow, right? Exactly, but it does, once they're open, lend the feeling of openness and airiness to the room. Let's continue on and see what waits for us. Okay. <laughs> this is the dining room. Yeah, this is um, one of the things that distinguishes this unit from the other ones in the building is this does have a separate formal dining room. I love the ceilings. Yeah, it's a great, uh, the plaster molding is a nice detail. It's kind of a cove and then a tray effect, which works very nice. Um, some of the other details are the hardwood floors and the rough hewn um, plaster texture. And once again, the hardwood floors are the very Animals. narrow slats. Correct, yes. And the kitchen over here? Yes, that's right over this way. Um, this kitchen also has the original tile on the countertops, this combination. Um, another unique feature of this particular unit is the breakfast nook with the archway and the small eating area there. I'm surprised at the uh, size of the unit. It's, uh, it's quite spacious. Yes, it is. Um, these are somewhere between 11 and 1,200 square feet. But yeah, for a place that was originally built as an apartment, they're pretty spacious. And this hallway, I assume, leads to the bedrooms? Yes, it does. Um, the hallway here is, again, there's another niche here in the hallway, which is um, a characteristic of this particular style of architecture. Um, this has a small entryway with an arch leading into the second bedroom. Um, a nice thing about the bedrooms is just the size of them. They're very roomy, you know, as far as bedrooms go. The um Plaster seems to be in excellent condition. Yes, it is. Uh, it takes a lot of work. <laughs> There's a lot of repairing and taping and um, plastering been, that goes on. Has this been retrofitted? Um, for earthquake? Yes. Uh, no, it has not, as far as I know. So uh, I don't have one more bedroom back here? Yes, one more. Well, first, we have to uh, check out the bathroom. Okay, this is the bathroom here. Um, this is one of the few bathrooms that has the original tile floor in it as well. Um, another distinguishing feature is the inset bathtub with the archway leading to it and the separate shower next to it. And that, uh, that looks like it's mostly original. Yes, it is. Um, the cabinets, I believe, I'm not sure if the tile is original or not, but the cabinet work, as far as the built-ins and everything, are original. Again, it has a unique ceiling. Yeah, the cove and the tray effect on the ceiling is another um, distinguishing feature here. And this, I guess, is the master bedroom? Yeah, this is the master bedroom here. Um, again, it's got the sort of entryway leading into it off the hallway and the arch. And another nice feature of it is the balcony, which opens out onto the courtyard. That makes a nice scene, just looking out there on the uh, courtyard. Yeah, it does. Um, one of the the ideas of having the courtyard architecture was to lend a feeling of openness and space to the people. So although they lived in a multi-unit dwelling, um, when they looked out from their units, they were able to feel a s sense of space and openness. All right, let's go back down and we'll look outside. Great. Does the uh, fountain work? The fountain is not operable at the moment. That's one of our uh, projects in the coming years is to get that going again. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Riddle also did about three uh, buildings down at the end of 3rd and Junipero? Yes, that's correct. Um, I believe he did the Alvarado, um, Casa del Patio, and Casa Nido. And then he also did um, a building which is the twin of this one, the Barcelona. It's identical except it's uh, reversed. Uh, it faces the south and you face the north. That's correct. Are we going to look at another unit? Um, that's up to you. If you have time and you, you have want time, to. sure. Okay, well, why don't we go up here? All right.
<laughs> now, Chris, how long have you lived here? Uh, about two and a half years. You uh, enjoy it? I love it. It's a great place. Everyone's really friendly, and everybody's really supportive of everyone else here. So it makes it for a nice place to live. Now, how big is this unit that we're going to see? Uh, this one, it's around 950 square feet. So this one is a two bedroom, one bath. Are these original doors? Yes, they are. And also the original ironwork on the door as well. So this is the living room here. It's a little messy. <laughs> and again, the original hardwood floors? Yeah, this has the original hardwood floors. Um, again, every unit here, one of the unique things is that everything's a little bit different. This has a little bit different ceiling treatment. It's kind of curved around the edges, and that's to accommodate the sloping roof line outside. And then this is the kitchen area here. Wow, this is a big kitchen, isn't it? Is, are all of them this size? Um, you know, they're pretty similar as far as size. Um, one of the nice things about um, the condos here are that all the rooms are pretty good size. You well, know, to me, this seems larger than the two bedroom we were in. Um, it, it may be this particular area, but then again, this doesn't have the eat-in breakfast nook area right. that the other one did. So, you know, they're probably pretty comparable once you take those, you know, that into account. The tile looks new, uh, is it? Yeah, the tile was redone. Thankfully, it was done by the previous owner. <laughs> so I didn't have to worry about that. That always helps. <laughs> yes, it does. I see you have a niche in the hallway. Yeah, I have a niche as well. Um, I think every single unit has one in there. Um, the ceiling treatment in this hallway, if the camera can pick it up, is a little bit different. It's a cove with a tray, which was similar to the bathroom of the previous one we looked in. Are the wrought iron fixtures original? Um, that's not. Actually, I had a friend who got that for me up in San Francisco, So, um, but it looked appropriate for um, the building. So, And the bathroom looks like it has had some work done on yeah, it? Yeah, that's had new tile on the floor and the counter there. Um, otherwise, the rest of it, the ceiling and stuff, is original. Um, this is uh, the front bedroom, and this opens out to the courtyard. Um, again, it's kind of that feeling of openness and, sp and spaciousness. I mean, it's kind of like what you said. It's not like you could put, you know, patio furniture out here, but the feeling of it is open, and it's a beautiful view out into the courtyard. Now, do uh, people use your uh, patio out there? Yeah, they use it. Um, we have... We've had commitment ceremonies there. Uh, people have birthday parties. You know, it almost doesn't make a difference what it is. Um, now, this courtyard housing was popular during the 20s and 30s when units faced each other with a courtyard in the middle with a green open space where people could relax and enjoy. Right. Um, part of it was, I mean, obviously the weather out here is so um, mild and temperate that they were able to use the outdoors um, all year round here. But it did, despite the fact that they were in a multi-unit um, housing development, they were able to have enjoy open space and greenery. Um, thank you for, you know, um, showing us on your show. Um, I'd also like to um, invite all your guests. Um, April 5th, which is a Saturday in the afternoon, um, we're going to have an open house, and that's to celebrate the building's 75th anniversary. So I'd like to um, welcome all your viewers to come on down in the afternoon on Saturday and take a look, and we'll be happy to show them some of the different um, units in here. We'll have some exhibits and displays for people to look at, too. I'll be here. Great. Join us again next month as we take another walk through history and uncover more Long Beach treasures.